Hey everyone, this is Black OKC and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Clan Heavy Medium Laser, how it compares with its main alternatives, and in what scenarios this weapon can be used effectively. Among the three heavy lasers that were introduced for the Civil War tech update, the HML is probably the least used. It's not really any one issue, but a combination of several different problems, and many of them are simply due to the existence of the Clan ERML, which is almost always the better choice. Let's start with Ghost Heat. You're limited to 4 HMLs before you trigger the heat penalty. Not a problem, some might say, since 4 HMLs is a 40 point alpha and 6 ERMLs is 42. Not much difference. But consider that the ERML comes with lower duration and better range, both of which means less return fire. The ERML also can boost its alpha and DPS by comboing with the UAC 10, 5, and Gauss, as well as the heavy class of lasers. The HML doesn't pair with those weapons well because you're wasting at least 200 meters of their range. So from an alpha size perspective, the only scenario where the HML wins out over the ERML is when you're limited to 3 or 4 energy hardpoints and you don't have the weight, slots, or hardpoints to carry ballistics. Another problem with this use case is that the clan mechs that can't carry ballistics are often lights and small mediums. These are the kind of mechs that cannot afford to give any amount of face time to the enemy, so that extra duration and lower range becomes a huge factor. You may be surprised that heat isn't as big of a factor with HMLs because it's in fact more heat efficient than the ERML and even beats the LPL by that measure. It simply feels hot because you're often using it on mechs that can't carry many heat sinks like this ACH. This to me is the only advantage that HMLs have over ERMLs. As we just said, the ERML can pair with a variety of other clan weapons. But what about HMLs? Well, we have to find weapons that fit the range profile, doesn't ghost heat, and ignores the long duration of the HML. Let's look at some of our choices. SRMs and LBX have effective ranges that pretty much match the HMLs, but these are primarily brawl weapons, and HML is not suitable for brawl. If you must take lasers, two better lasers to combo with LBX and SRMs are the MPL and SPL. ATMs, and to a lesser extent, LRMs, work best at short mid-range and requires phase time as well. But the factor that holds back missile damage is usually heat, so comboing them with HMLs eat up slots and weight that could be used for ammo or heat sinks. Bringing lasers sometimes will save your butt, but as long as you position correctly, you don't use them much during the game, and rather they end up limiting the damage output on your main weapon system. If you do feel more comfortable with backup lasers, I wouldn't dedicate many slots and tonnage to them, so ER cells are a good choices. The machine guns on the other hand makes a nice pairing with HML because the MGs themselves are zero heat and short range. MG lights usually play backstabbers and therefore the face time doesn't matter much, and the HML gives you a nice boost to DPS. I already did a video featuring the MG-HML combo and the Arctic Cheetah Shard, and I'll link that in the description below. Another case is the Piranha 8, which can't match the 1's DPS, but gets as close as possible with 3 HMLs. Another combo is the UAC-20 3-4 HML pairing. You don't see this very often because in most cases, when you have the tonnage and hardpoints to do UAC-20 HML, ERML Gauss is probably going to work better. But in some cases, this combo gives you build variety without making too many sacrifices in effectiveness. The key to this combo is that both the UAC-20 and HML have long firing durations and long cooldowns, while sharing similar ranges. You can often double tap the UAC-20 and HMLs at a slow moving target for 70-80 to 80 points of damage, then get back to cover. A UAC-20 jam, while it does suck, is not completely wasted because it allows your mech to get back to base heat, since this combo is somewhat hot. The major caveat is that if you're firing at fast moving targets, you have to fire either the lasers first or UX first, wait for the firing duration to stop, and fire the other weapon group, so prioritize the slow movers with your target selection. For our gameplay demo, the mech we're going to use is none other than our super versatile Hellbringer, specifically the Prime variant. The Prime is a unique example because the set of 8 Omnipod quirks gives you a 10% energy heat gen reduction, and it has 4 energy hardpoints on the left side. Even though this is far from being the most meta of builds on the bringer, it's almost the perfect use case of the UAC-20 HML combo. In my skill tree, I get all the laser duration nodes I can, as well as the two UAC jam time nodes. I also want heat gen and heat management since this build can get hot. Specifically for the Hellbringer, I'm sacrificing some durability nodes to get both ECM nodes. Okay, now let's get into a match. In this match, we're on Rubelite Oasis, which is a kind of a neutral map for uh, this build. So sometimes the engagement ranges can be a little bit longer than what I really want. Uh, I wish, you know, this obviously this build really works best uh, 
at 300 meters or maybe even a little bit under. Now, but a lot of times we can get these kind of closer range um, skirmishes. One thing to note about um, this build, uh, I think I already pretty much mentioned this, is that because of the long cooldowns, you're you're kind of defenseless in between those, in between your shots. So in risky situations like this, when you're taking kind of these risky peaks, you have to be, you try to have some friendlies near you so they can, uh, you know, shoot when you're not shooting, and when you're cooling down from uh, from the heat. I'm kind of staying close by this executioner here for the time being. So this victor is, you know, a little bit over 500 meters away. Our Ultra 20s still does pretty good damage at that range. You simply have to account for a bullet drop. Um, at those ranges. Well, of course, and leading too if they were moving, but that Victor wasn't really moving. Uh, the bullet drop can be pretty significant at f uh, past 400 meters, so do watch out for that. Here again is that Victor just kind of standing there. Um, as you see, I was kind of pointing to his center torso, but by that range, the bullet was pretty much, the AC-20 bullet was pretty much dropping to around his leg area. That Arctic Wolf took a bunch of shots there. You know that uh, this slope over here is really nice. Uh, the slope of the that hill is really matching the slope of our weapons, so we can take this left side peak and get pretty much all of our weapons out, our all of our lasers, including the arm plus the UAC-20. This blood ass here is a pretty good target. Of course, these guys <laughs> show up and I uh, can't really follow them. It took a little bit of damage, but it's okay. Not too much. So I thought that catapult was keep going was gonna keep moving left, but he changed directions and you know missed with that second uh York 20 salvo. The York 20 bullet velocity is still pretty slow, but at least it's better than MRMs. So, I think, you know, in this build, one of the cool things is that, you know, the the ECM really helps with, you know, st stops you from getting shot, prevents you from getting shot, which is kind of nice. So, like, usually somebody else will be the target, uh, tar uh, the opponent's target. If you notice that last shot on the catapult, the bullet drop comes into effect again. I missed my first shot on the catapult because of the bullet drop. This trebuchet like ran in front of me like <laughs> three times or something. I don't know why, but oh well. Well, uh, seven ten seven here. So if we kill this guy, um, we should be able to secure the game. Yuck, uh, Yuck 20s use a lot of ammo. Um, I usually try to put 5 tons with the 2 magazine capacity. The recent ammo buffs helped a bit, but 
it's still very, very, still very ammo hungry. So, and this is uh, after that, it really didn't do much. We just wanted to catch the last guy who was running around, and uh, eventually, we win by caps. So it's a pretty good match. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think of the HML and what kind of builds you run with the weapon. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button as well, and I'll see you next time.